of Tales from the Tabletop, the video series where I bring you anecdotes of adventure from Warhammer to D&D and everything in between, and I take my favorite one and I illustrate it for your listening and viewing pleasure. Let us begin. Our first story comes from Left Adeptinist 5380. There was a group of mercenaries sent after my group. At the time, there were only three of us. My character was a fighter slash samurai, a warlock, and a rogue. We managed to take out all of the mercs, but kept one alive. My character tied him to a chair and propped it on the side of a well with an expanding rod underneath. The long and the short of it was, whenever he lied, I would activate the rod, extending it, thus tossing his chair into the well. We would reel him back in after a few seconds and repeat the process. Once we got what we needed out of him, I tossed him into the well, still tied to the chair. He had admitted to some pretty heinous stuff that no samurai could forgive. Another story, this one was anonymous, it says, My ASMR lawful good oath of devotion paladin was named Ilara. And she was recently at a tavern in a town called New Beginnings. She asked the bartender where an adventurer would go to find a quest or make some cash in town, and he gives a few rumors around town for potential gain. One of the things he mentioned was a goblin lord that was stationed in a ruined castle somewhere. He also says that she could start a bar fight and loot the loser. To which Alara says, Oh... I don't think I could ever throw the first punch in a bar. Uh, assault and stealing is very wrong. Well, after this, Ilara sees a group of goblins in a booth and decides to go and talk to them. She asks about the goblin lord, hoping that they just tell her where he's at without asking her too many questions of her own because she can't lie. The goblins say, well, we aren't going to tell you where he is because you're probably just looking to kill him. Alara responds with, okay, that sounds fair, but before I leave you and all of you to your meal, I have to ask, what brings you all to the tavern? The goblins tell Alara about their most recent haul. Apparently, they had recently killed a bunch of pilgrims, and the goblins decided to treat themselves to a nice dinner for once. Alara punched them in the face, and then later looted their bodies. Our next story comes from Rusty of Shackleford. Rusty writes a story titled, Rainer Crestford, Green Knight, Hero of the Realm, Dumbass. I'm playing Rainer Crestford, a variant human fighter, Battlemaster to be specific. He's built like a Ford F-250 and is covered in enough metal and idiocy to pass as one. He had a strength of 18, a magic sword, a magic shield, and more armor class than he knew what to do with. He is also a complete and total dumbass. He has consistently misinterpreted women's advances as them asking for help, consistently spaces out and forgets people's names, is somehow fluent in giant, and has a strange ability to befriend fellow jocks. He hates bullies, he hates his dad just as much, and more recently, had the artificer of our party cast jump on him. Everyone except him then jumped into a bag of holding. Rainer then proceeded to use his increased jump height and an immovable rod to scale a 30-foot wall. We nearly got TPK'd before some reinforcements saved our butts, and Rainer gave an impassioned speech he made up because he was pressured to be the hometown hero. I adore him. He is impossibly dumb, and yet he is both so extremely attractive and naturally friendly, it just doesn't matter. Sounds like a fun one. If you got more stories, send them in. This next story is the one that I've been illustrating. I hope it was worth the wait. Strap in. This story is from Sunflower Shine 3 and the title is Sorcerer Sold His Soul Session 1, 
and then it only got worse from there. Me, a Kenku rogue, psionic blades, stabby crow. Cleric, Hadozi teeth domain cleric who's pretty much Darth Vader, but strangely pacifistic. Warlock, Hexblade Elf Changeling, whose weapon keeps changing, and my Kenku wants to steal it so bad. Sorcerer was a half-elf shadow magic, the focus of this story, and was very naive about some things. Important note, every one of us is proficient in deception. This is a theme of the party. We start the campaign on an airship, introducing ourselves, as we've all been hired on as mercenaries. The sorcerer immediately has no idea what I mean when I say my name. The rest of the party tease him relentlessly. We arrive at the main town of this campaign, and I go off to a tavern. Sorcerer decides to wander off and comes across a VIP room reserved for a few wealthy poker players and in the first roll of the game, immediately bluffs his way in. He bluffs his way through the minimum bet. He did not have close to the amount of gold they required. He rolled a natural 20 to win the first hand, and leaves with 150 gold, and the poker players being bewildered at this weird half-elf just playing one hand and dipping. He comes back. The party introduces themselves all as sorcerers. We are now... The Four Sorcerers. Three liars and a liar, but different. We get our assignment. We go into the surrounding jungle, figure out what happened to the Gripply tribe's egg, and off we go. And on the way we encounter a church. A church being guarded by two swarms of flies that we quickly dispatch. Entering the church, we find an imp trapped in a cage. The cleric and the warlock freed the imp, while the sorcerer gets real interested. The imp and sorcerer talk, and he finds out that the imp's previous master left him three years ago. The imp offers a deal of, I will help you out if you don't be a douche to me. The sorcerer agrees. The imp pulls out a scroll written in Infernal. None of us read Infernal, and the sorcerer just signs it. I mean, does anybody not know what happens next? Is there anyone watching this who does, who cannot guess what just happened and then what happens next? I, naive is right, gracious. Session two begins. We head to the Gripply village, get the rundown about the egg, learn that three Bullywog tribes hate these guys and maybe stole the egg. We gotta investigate. So off we go down a river, and we get accosted by a group of bandits. They let us go on, on the condition that we save their leader from the tribe that we're sailing off to. We reach the tribe, convince them not to burn the bandit leader to death because he whistled, which he did not. And the sorcerer decides to make a deal with the tribe's leader. He says he won't ever whistle again, and at the last moment sneaks in that the tribe has to tell him where the egg is. Turns out none of the tribe knows where the egg is, thus breaking the contract as it is signed. The tribe proceeds to spontaneously combust their souls stolen, and the imp vanishes as he suddenly needs to level up due to gaining about... 15 new souls. Needless to say, the rest of the party is saying, What the hell, sorcerer? A session and one Black Ops style tribe murder later, the imp returns. As not an imp, but now as a spined devil. Turns out that with every soul the devil takes, he grows stronger, gains more power. And it's only a matter of time until the sorcerer can't control him anymore, and the power dynamic flips. The sorcerer's soul is forfeit if he tries to do anything good or anything to stop this new devil. It was written in the contract, right between the lines. Couldn't you read it? And that's the end of this one. 
The artwork for today's episode was a lesson in humility. I put so much detail into this thorned devil uh, at the penciling stage. So much detail, so much experimentation, just for when I get to the inking stage realizing no amount of hatching or texture will work. There's too much going on. It'll interrupt the silhouette. I just need a straight silhouette of the thorned demon. So like a good third of the time that I spent on this drawing was just thrown away. And y'all, that's just how it happens sometimes. And when you do this kind of work for a living, you kind of have to get used to that and you have to pad that time in when you're giving your estimates to any given client. And you have to learn to just roll with those punches. Not gonna lie to you, still real upset at all the time that I wasted. But hey, the finished image looks good enough to me. I hope it looks good enough to you. And if you would like the original art from today's episode, it'll be available in my store at coffeeandhate.biz. Click store at the top. And while you're there, why not click on Gabe's Sticker Club for Attractive People and give it a look. See if it's the sort of thing you'd be into. $5 a month and I send a brand new sticker designed by yours truly every month in perpetuity forever and ever until one of us dies. That didn't sound ominous. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for listening. And may your dice roll high and never be cursed. The fun, the funny, the farcical, the teachable moments, and all the kinds of stories that are interrupted by a black cat around my ankles. A black cat who knocks over my daggone water. Sweetheart. Sweetheart, it's on you. It's on you. I told you to leave me alone. I told you not to mess with me. Now you are trapped by your own claws and subject to my love. Subject to my love. Entering the church, we find an imp trapped in a cave. Cage. Entering the ch- Entering the church, we find an imp trapped in a cave. Cage. Son of a beasting.